In this video, we're looking at the RSV Anvik, which is a small luxury research vessel that's owned and operated by UMA. It has a mini sub on the back and a helicopter on the roof, and is fairly nimble and fast, so come along as we tour it. So we're currently standing on the back deck of the RSV Anvik. There's a mini sub that's mounted on quick release uh, sliders. And as you can see, when this uh, vessel is fully fueled up, the rear deck is pretty much at the water level. That That's just uh, kind of how it is, unfortunately. But I did prefer to maximize the fuel and extend the range. So the Little Scut mini sub is a one person mini sub. Pretty straightforward to operate. We won't go into depths in this video, but it is uh, fully electronic. There's a good amount of battery and a heater. So there's no airlock, but you can go down and use the front um, manipulator arm to extend it and pick up whatever you need to while exploring the depths. There's some diving inventory here on both sides and it has full full height walls to prevent uh, like in a storm you'd have uh, I was gonna show it but it's okay in a storm you wouldn't f necessarily fall off the back deck because of these full height walls so that's back here now this area I'm gonna turn on the lights So this area is kind of a covered patio deck area, a little table and stairs making your way up to the helipad. Now the helipad is a, on the helipad is an LX-14 mini helicopter. There is the um, summon location. So if you are farther from the vessel, you can actually summon it to come to you using the helicopter. And I've showed that in other videos. Now the back deck also has an overhead crane, a gantry crane, that it can be used to deploy the mini sub. Now if we walk around the front here, there is a little hot tub, as I like to put in my creations, because when you're not when you're not uh, researching and doing work, you can be relaxing because you're on a yacht. So here there's some firefighting equipment. There is no hose, but that's okay, this isn't a rescue vessel. So the main entrance into the into the vessel is through here. So now we're in the bridge, and it's the only part of the ship. This The ship, which is fairly sleek in nature and fairly low, uh, it's the only part that's kind of above the rest of it, or like the highest point of the vessel is this bridge. There's a good amount of displays and kind of inf information that you can get from this so that's all here and then if we make our way down into the actual belly of the vessel we have an infirmary for one sick bay there is an armory up here with weapons for defending and whatever there is the equipment and electrical room, so it's kind of a storage slash um, the breakers. Now here we have our clipboard with the notes that are relevant to this vessel. Now over here, there is a small cabin for two. This is the only cabin on the vessel. It's not a large vessel, so there's just uh, two bunks and a little research area here. So two, two desks with some lab equipment. And back here is the lounge and crew accommodation area. So here we have our stove and kind of the kitchen area. There's a sectional with a TV in this lounge area and a table with a nice chandelier for the dining area. There used to be a door back here, but there was comments um, 
and requests like to lock it and whatever so I just removed it now it's all windows you could pretend that it's a door but because of the limitations of Stormworks I don't want to have a door here and as well as glass all the way around so fairly luxurious little little vessel um, and with the rest of the uh, research yachts which we have a couple of we have the this uh, class of vessel and we have the uh, Vi class of vessel that are both uh, research vessels but yachts as well so they're intended for kind of VIPs and more brief stays and a little more flashy they have the hardwood floor and luxury accommodations so now here is our engine room so you have to crawl down here and you can see there's two large engines that are mounted transversely um, as well as a generator back here so a single generator now I did add um, the fuel level here can be increased by allowing this so now if you press this button you can actually fuel up the reserve fuel level but then the downside is of course your uh, vessel will be settling even further in the water than this but you can extend the range so as needed you can do that also you'll notice on top we have propellers kind of mounted upwards that is in case uh, the vessel flips you can actually recover it and have it uh, flip back. So now we step into, actually we'll go to the co-pilot first. So the co-pilot seats um, is the, the um, autopilot. So as we have, and actually I'm going to update this after the video, I'm going to update it with our estimated time of arrival and other stuff that I usually have now in my auto, in my autopilot. But you can also turn on the crane camera and the deck camera. So there's two cameras mounted back here. Now for the crane camera, this helps us because we can actually um, operate the crane from here. So if we press one, the light turns on. So I'm pre I pressed one and now the crane is operational. So it's no longer attached to its kind of uh, pivots there, the locking pivots. So you don't have to deploy the submarine using the mini the crane because the best way to deploy the submarine is just to release the connectors and push it off. So that's the best way, best and fastest way to deploy the mini sub. Now to retrieve the mini sub. So here we are. Now, I do believe it can be paired in either direction because the track seems to be attached, going right into the center. So we can go here to our crane and shoot it out all the way, as well as um, extend it outwards. So like this, we could see that, and as well, it has uh yeah there we go so we can extend it out so right over top of the sub now if you have buddies two, more more than two of you you can obviously um each one can be in the control pan control one can be connecting the sub but in this case we're just going to do it all by ourselves and also with the submarine off you can see that the deck is no longer submerged but it's just on the cusp now in here, we can winch it up, and we see that it's coming up, and then we can drag the crane inward, there we go. Obviously there's different ways of our operating, but you, like I prefer to keep the, the crane the submarine as low as possible to prevent the center of gravity from tipping the vessel you could obviously raise it up but that just uh is asking for problems with the uh like if you hoist the sub up you will increase your center of gravity and can potentially flip the thing so now that we've got ourselves back on the track we can turn on the brakes and shove it into place And that should 
that locks it because now with now with it's not locked you could do this when you lock it you press this and now it's in place so that's the submarine the helicopter we've gone through but that's how you operate the crane and then all the lights are here we have our once our displays are on we have our beacon locator we have our sonar depth finder so that's on there we can actually start the generator manually now raise deck with propellers i've been asked what this is the idea behind this is when you press this the propellers on the bottom kind of just force the boat upright or push it up it's not really necessary it's if you're sinking but i do keep it i may be removing it in the future but it's here for now so enable automatic stabilization now this vessel doesn't have this automatically enabled that is something that in the future i do actually um also the flashing lights from the helipad it's kind of annoying but um the automatic stabilization is automatic and you disable it so that's something that i may actually fix in future um future updates of this and that's pretty much it i mean once you have this you can turn on i believe the upper ones here there we go which has two radars and a sonar there is a night vision in the middle and yeah that's it you control the trim throttle and it's fairly easy to operate it's a very forgiving vessel with a good top speed like if we trim up here force the nose up with the water jets we're going 46 knots so the vessel is fairly speedy and fast and this whole lineup is so there's three other or two other research yachts in the anvic class that uh, i'll cover in other videos but there you have it so that's pretty much it you have a radio here weather station and this displays so i hope you learned something i hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned for more as always